Hey, homebrewers. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, thanks for joining us on this Valentine's Day episode, although it's not Valentine's themed. Oh, well, it just happens to be Valentine's Day. Um, but yeah, I'm talking to you now so that way I don't interrupt your podcast episode halfway through. Uh, we just want to get all the announcements out of the way now so you can listen to the episode all the way through without interruption. Um, so yeah, this is the final and last episode of Reef of Madness. We want to thank the guys over at Goblin Inc. Press for letting us play this episode on this podcast, and we hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. Um, you can find this episode, or sorry, not this episode, but you can find this adventure on the DMs Guild, where you can download this and run it for your group. Uh, there's a lot more to this, uh, uh, basically this adventure that we didn't even touch upon and there's a lot more you can find out and play through. So get it for your group. Maybe run it for them and see if they like it. Um, but yeah, you can also follow us on all our social media at HBA The Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Let's have some conversations. Let's be friends because that's where the conversation happens. Uh, don't forget, you can also email us at HBAPodcast at gmail.com if you have an adventure that you want to see us play on the show. Uh, we would love to play your adventure. Also, speaking of adventures, uh, in two weeks, we will be playing a side quest, as we are going to call it, uh, written by Charlie, also known as Johnny Bronze. He will d be DMing, which means I actually get to play, and I'm excited about that. So in two weeks, you'll get to hear a little side quest that really doesn't have much to do with the story. It might, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It'll just be a fun little break before we hop back into the main storyline uh, with a new adventure. But yeah, that's all I got for now, and I hope you guys enjoy this finale. Let us know what you think, write in, message us, tweet us, all that good stuff. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes, because that would be awesome. And here's the episode. Hello, and welcome to Homebrew Adventures, the RPG show where we take wannabe adventurers and take them through a one-shot adventure created by you, the listener. I'm your dungeon master, Corey Keller. Join me every episode where I take our group of heroes who like to dungeons, and sometimes dragons, and we will see if they survive. Do they have what it takes? Is your adventure challenging? Let's find out on Homebrew Home Adventures. Adventure. 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 Previously on Homebrew Adventures. Uh, he, as he hops up, he's like, people, we're, we're protected, I told you. We now have luck and the gods on our side. He says, the, the amulet I found will protect us. And then I interrupt him. On that beachfront, you hear screams coming from there. Uh, you hear women screaming and some men yelling, get out of the way. And I, um, and I grab Fish and I say, see, it's already started, Fish. I gotta have that amulet. He says, I can still help, guys. He grabs his axe and he throws it at the shaman. God. And that's a natural 20. I, <laughs> I love John Kidd. <laughs> As that axe just flies through, and it just the shaman doesn't even see it coming. This axe just hits him right between the eyes. From the exhaustion of that last bit of effort, you see Duncan just kind of fall to the ground and just he's just breathing heavily, but he's not dead. going it to help Duncan. <laughs> what is the strongest healing thing I can do? Do I have any healing potions? And uh, are any of you going basically are any of you going to pursue these two guys? If not, we'll be out of initiative. Mm, if they're not no. pursuing me, then I'm yeah. not going to Okay, so then we're out of initiative. Yeah. So Duncan says, did I get him? I, I you did it, him. buddy. I did it. Him. Slam and dunk. I like, you did such a good job. You did such a good job. And, and uh, as I'm whispering that, I cast Healing Word. Okay. And that is 1d4 plus my spell casting modifier. So 2 plus 6 so is eight points. 8 points of healing. All right. That brings him back up to about 10 hit points. Woof. Hey. And he, he just kind of like, he kind of sits up and is like catching his breath. He's like, 
Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate it, man. Aww. And we and we we bro hug like the fists <laughs> back, you know. You do. Their side quest is they start a sitcom together <laughs> and get an apartment. <laughs> yeah, it's called Duncan and the Dragonborn. <laughs> do 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 do. It's the Duncan. <laughs> um, and so at this point, you guys, uh, Turk, you have the amulet. Um, do you do. go back to meet your fellow friends in the center? Let's go put it up uh, back on the town hall. It's to protect the city. <laughs> I was like, uh. Okay, so. Hey, guys. Look what I got. Um, and as yeah, you, know, you get back, um, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you see Fish. Um, just running directly at you as he takes a dive for the amulet, and I need you to roll. Oh my uh, gosh! Feature. A check with me. What uh, am I rolling? Dexterity. Thirteen. Uh, twelve. Okay. Booyah! So he dives at you. You're able to kind of get away, and you see Fish. Just he's just something about him isn't the way that he was before. Ooh. As he is starting to kind of uh, get a little angry. You notice his eyes kind of roll in the back of his head um, as he just kind of almost begins to float off the ground a little bit. Um, And he says, you know, he's just like, give it to me and let's roll for initiative. Can I? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. When he says give it to me, I'm going to say okay and set him on fire. Okay, we'll say that happens, but let's roll first. You're going to set him on fire? I can tie him up. That's not going to do anything. 16 can slap him out of 21 it. 21 again. Ooh. Uh, oh, that's nine. Right. You do add stuff, don't you? Yeah, your initiative bonus. I have plus zero, so I got Oh, nothing. plus one. Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, so at this point, um, since, Johnny, you are first up in the order anyways, uh, yeah, all of a sudden, Fish, you notice he is just, yeah, he's starting to levitate off the ground a little bit. His eyes are rolled into the back of his head, and this dark presence has kind of come about him as he is demanding the amulets. And so, Johnny, what are you doing? You said you're going to well, fire. Well, here's the thing. Is this going to be like, this is going to be my action regardless, right? I can't. Yes. Uh, and I don't want to do that. Um, I don't know. I don't want to kill the guy. I just want to snap out of yeah. what's. And at this point, there are other villagers kind of coming back out after they saw that most of those Let's things left. Run. And so um, the villagers are just kind of watching. They're They're not like looking like harmful or anything they're just kind of afraid and they're kind of watching what's going on all right yeah i think we need Let's to do this hold on i am going to try to break D. <laughs> oh we we met a gaming here and what's going on <laughs> um i would like to use my words which okay i'm kind of regretting this area now because i realize you're gonna say all right what are you gonna say and then i'll have to think of something but I want to inspire the villagers as a free action. I just want to like Ooh. give a brave heart speech using my bardic ways. So in a way, giving them all like a bardic inspiration kind of thing, but to get them to help us stop, restrain Fish. So like, um, and I guess for my action, what we can do is I can say, like, it'll be me giving bardic inspiration to them. Does that work? Mm-hmm. But, like, in a weird right. way. Just, like, an inspiration type thing, but they're not actually going to have the D6. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, So I'm going to give you inspiration on this oh, roll. Cool. Um, Because that is a great idea. Um, So give your speech and make your roll. <laughs> Well, uh, what am I rolling? Like, what do I have to? Like, what is this? Do I get any more uh, text or anything? It'll be yeah. your. It'll be your D twenty plus. Um, Persuasion. Performance. Mm. Which one do you have a higher in? Persuasion. Let's do persuasion. All right. Um, <clears throat> so. You got this. Uh, yeah. For some reason, you just hear this this epic background music yeah, start to come just, on. It comes on and I and I look up. And I look at Fish, and then I look at everyone else, and I say, "What are people from Blue Squid Village called?" That's not what I say. Are they Blue Squidians? Blue, Blue Squid. Blue, Blue Squid. Blue Squidwards. You hear someone in the back say, <laughs> "We're Blue Squidwards." I say, "Thanks, Blue Squidwards." Lend me your ears, as they all 
take an ear off and throw it at you. Classic <laughs> goof. I love all of you guys. Ba-dum-ts. Look here in my arms. Cradled is a, one of your own, your own brethren. Duncan, his acid burned beard. He has helped you. He's opened his cottage. He's let you sleep in his bed. And then he defends the village for you. Now in his time of need, in his time of injury, will you not defend him from this drunk a-hole? Fish, who's being a real beesh, if you know what I mean. So that's my speech. All right, go ahead and roll. And did you say I get plus persuasion? But did you say I get something inspiration? Else? So I mean, you can you roll with advantage. Okay, good because it wasn't that great. That was a six plus eight. It's seventeen plus eight, so twenty-five. You start to hear as you're giving the speech. You start to hear murmuring throughout the villagers. You know, kind of just they're all kind of looking at each other, and you know, Fish is starting to grow a little more aggressive. Uh, but what's really helping is they, they see Duncan and they see how he stood up and fought to protect the village. And you know, they see that he is hurt, and that Fish, one of their own, who was supposed to be the protector, their their you know, uh, elder of the village, just starting to come over with this rage. Um, you start to see the villagers starting to get a little amped up. Um, they all just start, uh, just kind of like hitting each other on the back and just like nodding their heads and you see them all just grab whatever they can as you see this charge of people just come from all around the square and they just start heading towards Fish with this kind of war cry and as Fish kind of sees this coming he starts to summon something deep inside of him as you see the rocks start to rise up from the ground and these rocks start to swirl around Fish a little bit and you see Fish outstretch his arms as these rocks just shoot out in all directions as this crowd of villagers is running towards him. Uh, you see that these rocks that shoot out start to hit some of the villagers. Some of the villagers are knocked over and you see that they're still charging though. They're still running. A few have run away, but most of them are still charging in. And what are you guys doing during this? I'm listening to let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Jump in on that fray. Protect Duncan. Yeah, I mean, I... I You're still b- raged out, right? Yeah, he's still enraged. So, yeah. So, I'm raging towards... <laughs> Heading towards Fish. Yeah. All right. Yeah, for, for Blue Squid Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so as these rocks are still shooting out, they've come, come in your direction. You guys are able to duck a few out of them, but you join the fray and you join the charge. You see that just this unity of this village who is just willing to protect its own as they start to head in, and I need you both to go ahead and roll attack rolls with uh, a melee weapon. Uh, eight. I got 11. Maybe. Okay, that's fine. So you join in in this fray as you... Uh, Varrock and Turk are heading in towards Fish with this group of villagers. As you see some of them, like I said, being knocked down. Johnny is still comforting uh, uh, Duncan as Duncan is starting to get a little fight in him as well. You see Duncan kind of hobble up and he has an arm around Johnny and Johnny and Duncan just arm in arm uh, over his shoulder. They bolt, uh, Duncan draws his axe as you see uh, Johnny light up his fire bre- or his lightning breath as they both join in on the charge as well. And then just in this fray of just people, you see that they all just come on top of Fish and just surround him. <laughs> you just see some of these villagers getting some of their anger out. Uh, and you see this just collapse of people. Still, this blast comes from Fish. And, and then one final blow as some more uh, villagers are kind of knocked in the fray. But eventually this group of villagers and yourselves are able to restrain Fish, and uh, he is basically knocked out. Can I just say that was awesome? <laughs> that worked out pretty well. <laughs> All right, what now? So in this fray of aftermath, you see that Fish is just kind of lying unconscious. Uh, you see that he's still breathing, but that his color is kind of returning a little bit to his face. Uh, he, he's pretty bruised up, though. I mean, some of those villagers got some good wax in. Um, uh, but what was 
he, basically he's being restrained by a lot of the villagers and yeah you just see this camaraderie amongst villagers uh who are standing up and they're just kind of cheering yeah all right we're gonna get- I, I got my i still have my arm around duck and i'm like they did this for you <laughs> just wait till janet hears <laughs> <laughs> like you inspired a whole town that's that's um, big. You have the amulet still, right, Turk? Yes. And you have the sextant still? Yes. So as you, as this is kind of going on, um, Turk, all of a sudden you just, as you have this amulet and sextant together, um, something kind of starts to happen between the two. Both kind of start to pulsate this color, uh, this kind of blue aura coming from it. And you can just kind of feel this uh, energy coming from them both. And you're kind of freaking out not knowing what to do but all of a sudden you just hear this blast come from that little island that you guys were at when you fought the crab where the obelisk is you kind of hear this just almost like a pulse of energy as you see this blue light just start to flash up in pulses from where the obelisk is and you see the same blue light start to pulse the same beat from uh that sextant and the amulet well I think we need to Shall we? head out there. Yeah. Uh, before we go, I will say, all right, you guys, uh, you got Fish, right? You got him handy? Yes, yes, we've right. got him. I would like to nominate Duncan to be the new protector of Blue Squid Village as the, what was Fish's job? Was he like Sheriff? Elder. Elder. Let's, Elder Duncan. Duncan, Duncan, Duncan. Yeah. You, Duncan. Start to, you start to see some of the people <laughs> chanting that. And there's this, yeah. this, this claps break out, and um, you, you see Janet kind of slip in behind, and you see her just kind of reach Ooh, her I hand love. out, and her and Duncan are holding hands in this She's moment. Like, I got this. <laughs> and then, and then uh, I say, okay, give a nod, and I'm like, all right, you, you, uh, you take care of this. And then we and we'll head, take care of this. And then we head we head to uh, my super sweet boat. <laughs> Your super sweet boat, sir. Yeah, as you guys are gonna head out, um, some of the villagers stop you and they, you yeah, know, start yeah. to show their appreciation. You get like yeah, like some healing spells and stuff, or slots, or some healing potions. Yeah. So the uh, the <laughs> villagers they uh, they're basically just like you guys are. You're going to do it. You're going to protect our village. You're going to get rid of this finally. Uh, so they kind of hang out with you there on the the beach as you guys are about to load into your boats. Um, and they each give they give you each enough potions to restore your health points back to maximum. Yes. So go ahead and restore them. You've already drank them. Does you- that also um, add back your stuff, uh, other things that... Yeah. Hit point. Can that wizard give us anything that'll give us our spell slots back? Stuff like that. We'll I say mean, he was ju- pretty inspired by the yeah. whole thing. <laughs> he was. Um, yeah, he gives you an elixir that um, he's like, you know what? You're taking a short rest. This will give you the benefits of a long rest. He's very specific, oddly specific about that for some reason. <laughs> and then I'm like, thanks, man. I don't know. <laughs> One of the guys that was in the fray who was helping hold uh, Fish down, he he comes and gives you each an extra potion of healing. He's like, take these in case you need them. Um, you see, you see Janet come over. She gives you. She says, uh, you know, all of us that grew up here in in the village, there's we do a lot of uh, well, we're fishermen by trade. Most of us, some of us, woodworkers. Um, but we all spend time in the ocean, and she hands you each these vials. Uh, she says, these will help you to breathe underwater. Ah, oh, nice. Thanks, girl. She says, we all take them because we all explore these beautiful waters, but we haven't in a while. Yeah, so you each got a potion of healing and uh, a potion to breathe underwater. She says, if the time ever comes where you'll need this. All right, so are we heading to the obelisk? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you uh, you all hop in uh, Johnny's boat. And it is you, his boat. You start paddling your way to the uh, little outcropping there. Um, so yeah, it's same thing. It's another couple hour little paddle. So during this time, is there anything you guys say to each other to hype each other up? Or is this kind I, of a solemn trip? I look at uh, Brock and I'm like, you know, uh, in the ocean, it's, it's like the world's well. <laughs> That's what they call it. Huh. 
But yeah, I guess I could see that. What do you say we uh we go for a little uh maybe we we'll yeah. throw one for luck, huh? What do you say? For luck for what we're about to do. Yeah. We need it. You know. God knows that. But yeah. It's hey. We've been we've been in some tight spots and uh All right, let me uh let's, get out. And I wanna really make sure that you know, this is good. So yeah. I'm gonna take out ten gold pieces. Oh, today. ten. You're gonna make a wish with ten gold pieces, huh? I'm gonna make ten wishes. So. All right. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> So how you uh, how you doing this? Are you guys doing your traditional behind uh, yeah. over the uh, well, shoulder? Here's, all right, so wh- you're, I'm I'm going. What hand are you throwing with? Uh, the right. Your right hand. Okay, so I'm going to sit on his right side, and then in my right hand, I'm going to hold one gold. And I'm like, well, you, you you got more than me. Right. Yeah. And so I'm going to throw my gold, mm-hmm. and then with my left, left hand, hand, yeah, try to I catch you. As many as I can. At least two, <laughs> hopefully more. Okay. We'll do this. Okay. I, I got I got this planned out. All right. All right. Okay. I turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Turk kind of knows what's going to play out, so she doesn't want to be seen. I put my this. headphones uh, in. <laughs> all right. So uh, you guys, any, what do you say as you toss them over? Yeah. What do we? What do we... Well, anchors away. <laughs> yeah. What is yeah. your wish? What is it that you're wishing for at this moment? Uh, mainly for safety for when we arrive on this island and that uh, everyone in this boat will stick together and be kind and true and honest to one another and um, help us all out. How dare you? I'm turned around. I'm sorry. I say, I say, you know what? That was moving. Are you sure you're not a bard? Maybe you're... Got a little bard in you. <laughs> maybe. I was trying to find a way to com- combine bard and barbarian and it's harder than you think. Bardarian? Are you bardarian? I don't know. All right. Well, then ditto. Same sentiments. Honest, true, Stick yeah. together. Uh, you know, we got this. Okay. All right. I close my eyes. <laughs> I close my eyes. <laughs> but Take not really. Like I keep one open. As you toss the gold and over I the shoulders. Toss them over my shoulder. And, and I Johnny. roll a sleight of hand. And that's a 12 plus 6. All right. Roll a d10 for me. A d10. Which one? That's this one. And... That's a four. You catch four gold pieces. Hey, you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> I'm up three. <laughs> so let me find uh, that puts me three more gold pieces. All right. So yeah, you guys uh, begin to uh, arrive. Um, just as you remember, a dozen or so rocks, uh, they are sharply coming up from the water at various angles, scattered around the obelisk and the island. Uh, unlike the last time you were here, the outcropping is inhabited by a number of mutated sea creatures. Uh, they are all perfectly still and staring directly at you as you arrive. Two huge three-clawed crabs perch on large rocks. A massive bright blue octopus covered in pulsating green veins is also hanging out. And you see four gulls with nine heads between them sit atop the tallest rocks. Uh, Between the crabs, the birds, and the octopus, there are far too many claws, tentacles, and glowing blue eyes to count. So they are surrounding the obelisk as you arrive, kind of in a semicircle. Um, They're staring at you menacingly, but they don't move. Mm. They're just kind of watching you. Didn't didn't we get uh, two potions of breathing underwater from the very first time we were here? I think you did. Yeah, yeah. I think Varrock found those when yeah. he slid open the crab. So yeah, you have an extra two. Uh, uh, we should have brought some folly from the village, some villagers to take the hits for us. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but yeah, so you pull up to shore. Your you know your boat is there. You, um, yeah, the obelisk is still pulsating this blue heavy light now. Um, as it's starting to look a little more unstable. Um, and you see, like I said, you see all these just mutated creatures that's probably coming from whatever is pulsating out of this obelisk, and they're just sitting and staring at all oh, of you. I'm going to try we, an animal handle on. then. <laughs> I was going to say, can we assume that uh, Turk told us what the wizard said on the boat right here? Because we really hadn't had a time to talk about that. Uh, do you want to tell them, Turk? I don't know. You seem pretty annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't meta game. I was biting my tongue the whole time until I just couldn't. Because didn't he say something about like you'll if you're not careful you'll unlock the beast? But like I, I feel like we gotta have to unlock it and then kill it. For show. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I so she, you, you explained all this. Okay. Yeah. Blah 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 blah. Okay. 
All right, so what do you guys like to do? Okay. Animal handling. I yeah, think. that's worth a shot. Why not? Um, and it's going to be on all of them. I'm just going to try and <laughs> handle all of them. If all my get, animal if friends. If we get a mutated animal army, I will be so happy. Yeah, and I don't remember how this works, so... You just roll a d20, d20 and add your animal handling and tell me what you're trying to do. Okay, so 14. And uh, I just want to have them not attack us. So you're going to try to like, just in kinda, some like motions, just be like, hey, we come in peace kind of thing, like yeah, yeah, try yeah, to yeah. calm them? Yeah, kind of. Like, or you get in them to disperse. No, I want them there. Okay. So you just want them to be your bros. I mean, yeah. they're already pretty just like sitting there. Yeah, they're they not like, calm. they're I'm not like in a, uh, like a stance where they're going to attack, but they're just literally just kind of just sitting there staring at you all. Yeah. I just kind of want to be like, we're here. We're not hurt to hurt you. And, okay. Uh, you do, you do some yeah. weird monster whispering. Mm-hmm. All right. So far they're still just doing the same thing and you're just kind of hoping that that worked. Okay. So we, uh, what do you think? You want to put, put the, uh, the thing in the thing and, yeah. Let's go do the thing. <laughs> so what thing is the thing that you were going to do? Oh, you know the thing. What thing? Why, why are you staring at me? What? Why won't you have the thing? Do? Okay, so we put we put the thing in the thing. With the with, <laughs> with the other thing. Which thing are you putting in the thing? Both things. <laughs> So all right, so we'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, well, please uh, tell our listeners what the things are you're putting. <laughs> okay. So Which, are there obvious slots for for the amulet and sextant? As far as you know, you notice that the sextant matches up to something that's in the obelisk. But the, I'm sure that the amulet does too. You're gonna have to go check. I'm checking it out, <laughs> and it fits. <laughs> it's a perfect fit. Oh hey, as you examine the obelisk, you notice that yes, there is a spot that looks. Looks like the amulet on the lower Looky half there. of it. All right. So you're going to put the things in the things? Uh, so we're trying All right. to tell you. Yeah, so, so the sextant in the amulet spot and the amulet yeah, in the yeah, sextant spot. Right. So you notice that, yeah, as she's about to start putting the things in the things, I'm like, all of these creatures ready? rush in. Okay, like, come on. I thought you but they're rushing in, and as Turk sees that they're rushing in, she hurries up and slams these objects into the obelisk. And as you insert the sexton and the amulet into the obelisk, this pulsating blue sphere comes out of the obelisk, and it basically covers you three. And as these creatures are coming, just full force attacking at you guys, um, the obelisk sucks you in right as they're about to uh, basically come over you, and you guys are sucked into the obelisk. stars all around you okay as you have this feeling of falling you notice that you're 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 heading down and as you're heading down you see stars and galaxies and just oh, this weird stuff that you have no idea where you're at um, and you're just still falling you still have this feeling uh, you hear sounds of water like kind of rushing all around you and you can feel that there is water around you but you can breathe normally and eventually after you've fallen for a little while you kind of spit out of this this kind of uh, circle of energy you kind of fall out of that and you kind of you hit the the base of this floor and you notice that as you're looking you are on the bottom of the ocean you're at the ocean floor but around you like I said you see water you see stars and galaxies and it's just very odd what you see and it's still it's quiet and you just you feel the water around you i throw up (laughs) turk throws up (laughs) it's too much (laughs) yeah anybody else Uh, is it just like floating right now around us the vomit uh it it 
for some reason, the laws of gravity still apply right now. Okay. So she vomits on the ocean floor. <laughs> but like I said, it's, so it's we're like, weird. I, got, I try to comfort her and I'm like, hey, you know what? Not many people can say they vomited on the ocean floor. Like, that's something. I don't, don't have my ceiling. Uh, why don't we all roll perception checks? Thanks for thanks for that though. <laughs> I'm just looking at vomit. Fourteen. I got a two. It's like a nine twelve five roll. I have a no, well four total. Twelve. All right, uh, for Rock, you notice that. Well, I mean, all of you notice that you're inside like this almost where you're at is enclosed like a big almost uh, cavern that we were spit out of this weird, almost portal looking thing above you, this field of energy. But Varaki, you notice that there was a slight little tunnel uh, just kind of where you're at. Okay. You kind of just look over and you notice this tunnel and that seems to be the only exit from where you guys are at right now. Okay. Guys, this way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, should we take one of these potions then? Or these vials to breathe underwater? Here's, you're here's, breathing fine right yeah, now. Yeah, because you're okay. So I don't think this would be out of character. Like, I think Johnny would be smart enough to put this together. I think we should hold off on these because whatever we're about to do might take out this magic that we're experiencing. Right. And we're under the ocean. Right. If the magic just stops, we don't know if the magic's going to take us back. So, we might need to be able to breathe underwater to get from here to up there after the fact. Unless okay. we're dead, then we won't need them. Okay, that makes sense. True that. Okay, so are you guys going to go down that tunnel? Go down that tunnel. Yep. All right, so as you start to head towards this tunnel, you guys are kind of been walking through it for just a little bit. You start to hear some noise and commotion coming ahead of you. Um, your sounds of just... Uh, I don't know. You just you're not quite sure what the sound is. There's yelling. There's lots of just loud banging, and um, it just seems like a lot going on that you hear coming ahead of you. Can we tell how like how that. far ahead? Like, um, just close? basically around the next bend. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty close. I keep going. I keep walking. At least keep walking. Hold my axe out. Wait, can me. beforehand? Can I give both of them? A bardic inspiration, just like you can give one. Why can't I give two? Rule check inspiration die is a d6. Once within the next 10 minutes, the creature can roll the die equal to my charisma modifier. Well, you have good charisma, don't you? Yeah, on saving throws, it's six. But what's your just normal charisma yeah, modifier? Four. So you can do four bardic inspirations. So I can give both of them one, and that puts me down to two. And then once you finish a long rest, you can gain them all back. Yeah. So And, and then, so, yeah, now they can actually add it to their AC or to your attack rolls. Cool. So, so we, you guys can, can choose, choose which Yeah, you okay, choose which one you use it for. And it, well, well no, I mean, it just whenever you want point, to do yeah. it. Oh. Yeah. You don't yeah. choose it now. It just when Does the it time comes. Does it just add one point? Yeah. One D8. One D6. So you'd roll it, like, say, like, someone attacks you, and they're like, oh, uh, they're attacking you, and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to roll this one D6. Wow. That's good. So yeah. if they beat it by one, you can do it. So here, here's a D6 for you. Thanks, homie. Here's a D6 for you. So that's your... High five. Inspiration <laughs> die. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you guys feel equipped now? <laughs> yes, and yeah. I, ready, I ready my longbow. All right, so you said you guys are just walking in, right? Yeah. I pull, okay. Yeah, I pulled Casually. <laughs> What's up, guys? Okay, so all three of you, you, uh, you step past this boundary you step into this almost big chamber and as you step in you notice that there is something going on just to the right of you and just down below a little bit you see just this blue wall of energy that is holding back these almost like energy blasts coming at it you see this large beast with one gigantic eye sitting oh, in the middle. You see all these, you see this like appendages of eight eyeballs kind of surrounding that central eye. You see this bioluminescent light coming and hanging over that eye in front of his jaws that have jagged, sharp teeth. Uh, you also see this kind of old lady who is standing beside this beast who is also casting these energy blasts into this blue wall. And behind this blue wall, with the energy coming from the ring, you see this uh, elven girl 
who is holding uh, back this energy. She's looking very beat and tattered, um, almost out of breath. And you notice that it is, in fact, Xenia who is holding back these energy blasts. And as you guys enter, you notice that the beast takes notice of you all. And he turns and looks at you. And without hesitation, just this giant blast of energy comes straight in your direction. Um, and as that does, uh, Xenia lets go of the uh, that energy that she was using to protect herself. And she yells, she, you just hear her yell, no, as she just starts running as this energy is just coming straight for you, Turk. Like it is kind of pinpointed and narrowed down into this line of sight coming straight at you. And Xenia yells, no, and she runs. And all of a sudden you see Xenia, she just jumps right in front of the blast as this blast just full on hits Xenia right in the chest as she just falls to the ground. And you guys just see this kind of unfold as you turn into this cavern and you see that she just takes the blast just full on as most of her body just becomes engulfed in this blue um, just energy as where she was laying down. Now you see her body has disappeared. There was nothing I can do. Uh, You were nothing you could do. No. As she dove to take this hit for you, Turk. Um, and you see that where she, her body was lying, um, this blue energy that kind of has her facial features goes up into the air and it's, uh, you see it just come down and basically encircle inside of this ring, that this silver ring on the ground and that blue energy goes into this blue, uh, this ring as it just glows a bright blue and you, for some reason, Turk, you hear this ring call out your name. Uh, I grab it. <laughs> <laughs> you grab it? Okay. Um, what do you do with it? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of Put at a loss. On. That's a lot. Put it on. Okay. I am just weeping. <laughs> and, and, uh. Just, just put it on. <laughs> so this ring that you just saw your your friend guardian uh, just completely get annihilated, and her, you see just as something just goes inside this ring as you put it on, you just feel this uh, this energy kind of flow through you. Um, and this is actually a ring of protection, so you can add plus one to your AC bonus. What? But as you you kind of feel a little more more strong, you feel a little more protected. Um, and uh, there's just something about this ring as you still hear it kind of call out your name. Um, and then without missing a beat, you hear this monster just kind of let out this laugh. And he's like, Haha, that makes guardian number two I've killed. I say, I... well, you know, to be fair, she kind of quit, so... You didn't really get another guardian. I mean, you know, she was selected and then she walked away. Like, I'm not, I'm not one to split hairs, but you didn't kill another guardian, and you're not gonna. And we're gonna kill you. <laughs> I mean, that Boom. was implied. We didn't have to say that. That I was kind of like you really saying the obvious. Uh, good. I one. say it through tears because I'm, I'm, I'm it's just, an emotional wreck mm-hmm. right now. A, a very literal and wordy <laughs> emotional pardon pardon us monster we we've got a thing listen no <laughs> enough words okay <laughs> um so yeah he is now just kind of staring you guys down him in this uh old elven lady um as they start to make the charge towards you what do you do uh i i throw the coral short sword at him Okay. Just throw it Roll at an him. attack. Yeah. Roll a d20. Plus uh, dexterity. 
Oh boy, you're in trouble. Because I rolled a 17 plus 2 is 19. Yes, that hits. All right, and what's... Uh, so damage on that, do 1d8 plus uh, your dexterity modifier. All right, so uh, plus dexterity modifier, 10. Wait, no, 8, sorry. All right. Okay, let's roll for initiative. Oh, shoot. 18. 3. 13. I'm going to... Save the best for last. <laughs> Did you add your initiative bonus? I don't have an initiative bonus. Oh, you really need to get some initiative. <laughs> I have no initiative. Grab the. So as <laughs> as uh, as this weird coral short sword does it do uh, like special him, magic damage? Um, oh, it does do plus one damage. Excuse me. So yeah, you actually hit him for one more. So as this hits him, he kind of uh, it's just more of an annoyance. You know, as you hit him with it, and he says, ah, well, that was interesting. I, I just didn't want to carry it anymore. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you are the last three guardians. You are mistaken. What a pleasure to have you in my presence. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Deep Lord. <laughs> Why a, is that funny? That's a dumb name. <laughs> that's a, that's my name. I mean, that's that's my name. Good I, job, Mom and, and Dad. And you were right. It, you know, you were right. It is your pleasure. It's not our pleasure. <laughs> I'm the Deep Lord. Oh. Oh. Deep Lord sounds scarier. Does it? It sounds. Does it sound scary? Because honestly, I you're, you're a Deep Lord. I had I a just, lot of you know therapy sessions when I was younger, <laughs> and <laughs> Deep Lord helped me out. Yeah, so okay, well, you know. Anyways, well, a lot of kids call you like four eyes but like times two i mean eight eyes but you know oh so you're not strong in math good to know <laughs> shut up i'm just this this i this is, should count as vicious mockery right here <laughs> like he says can't you see i'm trying to introduce myself this this is what all good villains do before i kill you yeah right and most villains have better names than deep lord let's let's workshop this let's have a better name than deep lord anyways I'm going to kill you like I killed that other guardian. And there's going to be no more guardians left on this world to protect. Yeah, so, but you're goodbye. I, you're, you're assuming we're the last three. I already told you. You're wrong. We're not the last three. As he goes ahead and attacks you with a straight up bite, Johnny, for mouthing off. No, how was I mouthing off? You were so <laughs> mouthing off. Don't even argue. Uh, 15. 15 does not. Does not? No. Nope. All right. He, uh, the Deep Lord misses. Good job. <laughs> oh, yeah, was, interesting. Oh. Keep that on the DL. On the DL. Oh, that, is that what it is really started as? It was the DL, and then you're like, oh, the deep DL, Lord. So you're deep Lord. Oh, I'm the Deep Lord. You could have gone with like, like Derek Lewis. That would have been better than Deep Lord. I'm scared. So of that as you Derek. step out of the way of his attack, which he's a pretty big guy, but you were able to do it. Um, his little uh, servant. Uh, behind him shoots off an energy blast and that is a natural 20 doesn't hit <laughs> <laughs> oh it hits uh that is gonna be 18 points of damage ah. sir johnny woof and you hear this old lady don't worry i've got you as she's talking to her deep lord it just sounds dirty <laughs> all right um, Gotta love that double damage on natural 20s. Do you? <laughs> All right. Um, and we are, uh, yeah, so. Now we're in initiative. Here we go. After all that. After all that. So does he have, he has one big eye, right? Did you, he didn't take any extra, like, psychic damage for the sweet burns. <laughs> no. Dripping on him. Rock, you're up. Okay. Does he have, did he have one big eye? Yes. Okay. With a nasty scar across it. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, run and attack with my great axe and aim for his eye. Okay. His main eye? Yeah. His okay. Main. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> um, 13. 13. Um, that does not hit. Sorry. Mm. <sighs> nice try, does buddy. Does that D6 thing mm -hmm. play into this? Oh, yeah. If you want to do that to add that to your okay. attack roll. 19. Yes, that hits. Okay. So then what are you going to do? D12. Yeah. 
13, 15 damage. Ooh, nice. All right, yeah, he uh, he takes a nice hit on the eye, and he says, what is it with my eye? The last guy that stabbed me across my eye, he basically, okay, basically the last guardian I killed, well, besides your friend here, he uh, he slashed me across my eye and trapped me down here with a magical blade. I so wish that was going next so I could say so many things. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> he says, I don't, stop hitting me in my eye. All right, Johnny, you're up. <laughs> <clears throat> you think this guy would be so, a lot scarier <laughs> is drinking a healing potion in action yes it is unfortunately because you can ask the D&D guys okay alright so pretty much whatever I do I got I gotta heal myself I gotta heal myself because I am hurting um all right, so for my, I'm just gonna do vicious mockery as a cantrip while I uh, drink the healing potion. But those are both actions. No, cantrips aren't actions. It's an action. It's not no, a spell slot. It's, not a, it's an action. Can't, I, I'm doing that ventriloquism thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's an action. All right, fine. All right, well then, I'm just gonna do. Yeah, I drink the, I drink the potion. Two d four plus two. Isn't he the worst? I know he didn't really, he didn't make the rules, but he, he's really smug about it, isn't he? Five points. Could I double? Could I have been double fisting it? No, that's still two things. Here. <laughs> Sorry. He's <laughs> trying. Uh, do you want to move? You're all basically in the same area right now. No, because if I die, I want one of them to be able to. Pour a potion down my mouth. There you go. Um, hey, it's the uh, bad guy's turn. Oh, big eye. <laughs> All right, I need uh, Varrock and Turk to make a constitution saving throw, please. Why? Because he basically, he two, two of his eyes on either side of him, they both stare. One stares at you, Turk. One stares at you, uh, Varrock. Mm-hmm. And they uh, cast uh, some beams out. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Is this being charmed or... I guess you'll find out. Well, because so, I have advantage. It is not charming you, no. <laughs> I thought you said it did. I have advantage, but that's his, might as well. Okay. Um, 20. Okay, I missed you. Good. Okay, so what do I add to this? Your constitution modifier. Oh, really? Nothing else? Is it nope. not the saving throw one? Yeah, whatever it says on the constitution saving throw. Oh. Because that adds your... 11? You become paralyzed. Uh, oh, can I yeah. use this? Yo, yeah, you can use your inspiration die. Okay, plus four. So what was I at? It misses you. Booyah! <laughs> you and guys thank like, Johnny, thank Johnny for yeah, those inspiration die. Inspiration. Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You're, you're a good man. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, he uh, he says, quit being so wily and let me get you with my paralyzing gazes. I put my hands on my legs and I go suck. Uh, I laughed for you. The hag moves closer, <laughs> and Turk, you're now up. Did you say the hag moves closer? Yeah, the hag moves closer. <laughs> I have a lot of. And Zodanork says, "The Deep Lord, you know, before you started your turn, he says you were all gonna die. No more guardians." Oh At my gosh, point, you're so pathetic. We will, but like not, not now, not tonight, not here, not eventually, but not, not against you. He says, "I will release my magic upon all the world." No, you won't. Well, you suck. Not. I cannot wait for my turn. <laughs> I am so angry about so many things. Please I, let him know what you're angry about. I uh, take take my longbow and I go I go for his big old um, eye again. You're going to be at disadvantage since you're really close. How close am I? You guys are all huddled together. Yeah. He came at Johnny and like so. You guys okay, are okay. Then I there. move. I move, I move back and okay. then I shoot. <laughs> And his eye. His central eye? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 10 plus 9, so 19. Yep. All right. 
And roll that beautiful damage. Do I need to say if I shot one of my fancy arrows before I shoot it? We'll assume these are all. You have okay. twenty of them, so we'll assume okay, these are so, all. Yeah, this is one of them. Okay, so three plus three plus one. So seven. Seven points of damage. Okay. And I said, "Who gave you that scar? Who, who was it?" I don't know. Some some elf guardian I killed. Oh, okay. All right. A long time ago. Why? Just wondering. Turn over. <laughs> Brock, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm going to run and attack the eye that's staring at me, his weird I'm side on. Okay. Kind of worried about the old lady. That's true, too. Like, she's been doing work. She has. It just doesn't affect me. Like, <laughs> that's fair. So, all right. so you're going to take out one of his eyes is what you're aiming for? Yeah. That's also okay. a good idea. Yeah, plus, yeah, I'm okay. I'm doing that. Um, no. <laughs> it's always Gosh. encouraging. Ten. Uh, sorry, that does not. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Huh. So your attack misses as you kind of go for the eye, but you just fail. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> we could all probably agree here without too much conversation that in a mess kit would be salt and pepper. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I take out the salt packets and I dump them in his um, eye cuts. Uh, that would be another action. That's an action? Yeah. Uh, everything's an action. Right. All right. Well, I ready them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I ready your go. salt and pepper. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> He's like, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> All right, Johnny. So I need him, the dork lord. Okay. To... Oh, burn. <laughs> I need it to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Isn't it? It's fun to turn that around, isn't it's it? It's funny that wisdom's his highest. Again, that happened earlier. And... Yeah. Um, what is that? 9, 10, 12, 13. Does not. Okay. 14. So you're about to get vicious mockery. Oh no! And I look at him. Do it. I'm just like, look at you. Just take. I mean, seriously, take a second and look at yourself with your big, ugly, ugly eyes that aren't worth any good. You're sitting here. You call yourself the Deep Lord. You call yourself the big bad guy. This old lady's been doing more damage than you. You want to show who, who's the real boss? It's this. 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 This one over here, this lady. That old bitty. That old bird <laughs> almost killed me, and you haven't done jack squat because you a punk. And he, That's good. he takes, I'm trying to sow some discord between him, him, him and his lady, too. Um, he takes four. It's 1d4 uh, psychic damage. Okay. And you are uh, have disadvantage on your next attack. Boom. Okay. Just my next attack. Yeah, and you did take a roll of four okay. on the d four. So. Yep. Good job, man. Thanks. Okay, so um, during this, because of that vicious mockery you got in his head a little bit, he says, "Do I need to prove to you that I'm the boss?" And he shoots. Like out of every single one of his eyes, he shoots this kind of psionic ray at the old hag. Just disintegrating her. Mm, man, I'm good. So he takes her out and he says, "Now let the fun begin." I, I just, I, I, I genuinely, I look at him and I applaud. <laughs> I'm just a real nice slow clap. Um, he is now going to wait. That wasn't his action. Nope. Oh, come on. Oh, oh come that, on. That does not make we any sense salt, at all with the but conversation. He, we, can't, we can't pour salt unless it's an action. <laughs> I mean, this guy does have multi-actions. I just haven't been using them yet. Okay. I'm progressing the story along here. Right. Now I'm going to start using them all, so all right. get what you wish for. All right. Well, then that counted as one. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to keep you honest. Um, he rolled a one. Yes. Critical fail. What's he gonna? What's Big gonna surprise. happen? Surprise! <laughs> fell from the deep lord. Um, <laughs> so out of his eight eyes, he the two one on his direct right, one on his direct left. 
they were going to shoot directly at Johnny, but they wound up shooting at each other. <laughs> and now both those eyes are paralyzed. Derp, and they're just kind of hanging, hanging limp. I point. <laughs> And he's like, I'm starting to relive all these these therapy sessions from childhood. Yeah. I am I am laughing hysterically. I can't control myself. I'm just. It's, it's tough. Up. I'm starting to question my my ability to be a beholder. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. as Turk, it is now your turn. Alrighty, so I take another another shot to the to the big guy. To the central eye. Okay. Comprende? Comprende. Six plus nine, 15? Yep. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. So, let's see here. So, I got six plus three plus one. So, 10 points damage right in the... Okay. And then I... I'm going to take my my additional action to do the same thing. Okay. So I'm going to just blind the sucker. Do it my... Well, actually, I'll save that for later. Okay, never mind. I'm just going to roll the dice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 13 plus 9. That hits. Yep. I'm awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh... So Seven points of damage. Okay. In anything? Any? He's starting to get hurt. You were able to take out another one of his eyes as well. Nice. So the the big eye or just the? No, just one of the side eyes. Okay. And then I, I kind of do the, I don't know. I don't know how to say this over a microphone, but I'm like, I kind of just a <laughs> little bit you of. You posture up. You bow yeah. up at him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, Brock. All right, and this is going to get graphic, and we're just going to deal with it. But I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to... Are you going to poop on him? No, I'm going to pee on my sword. (laughs) And so I pee on the sword. I take the salt packets, and I line it. (laughs) Now with salt and pee, so it's all sticks. Wait, is peeing one action? (laughs) No. (laughs) No. And then I'm going to attack him, uh, hopefully successfully this time, with that salty... Salty P. Yeah. So. Salty P sword. Yep. Uh, 823. Oh. Yeah, I think that hits. That's That's so so sweet. Yeah, so I'm going to go right for the eye. Um, The main, central, ugliest, biggest eye. He's most self-conscious about. (laughs) And for, uh, that would be 11, 13. 13? Okay. And I feel he, like the salt should maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. got to be like a plus D4, right? <laughs> Something. I mean, that was, that, he's stinging. Like, there's like an open wound coming off yeah. the side of him. And as the sword comes, it cuts off another one of those little, you know, dangling eyeballs. So he's down to like four eyeballs now that kind of go around him. Um, and he's he's taking some pain. And he's, I mean, he's up against three guardians that are just doing work on him. Um, and Johnny. Um, Good work, man. So I'm going to um, really use my my breath weapon. I'm gonna shoot some lightning at this guy. Okay. Um. So get a dexterity save from you. Okay. He can't be that dexterous. He's a giant eyeball. Um. Fifteen plus two, seventeen. All right, so you take 1d6 lightning damage. As lightning damage comes out of your mouth, since you are surrounded by water, Yeah. you all take damage. I don't. Oh, because you don't get affected by lightning damage, but sorry for Rock and Turk. So they got to do a dex save of 13. So how much does my guy take since there's only half of that? One. <laughs> Or do I roll two and then do half of it? Instead of rolling two, you could just roll one, like you did. Yeah, but I rolled a one, and I want it to be higher. So if uh, I roll a you six, roll a two and take half of it. Can't go ahead. I hate you so much. <laughs> I hate you so. You much. wanted to roll. I said go ahead. Yeah, but then you said yeah, you roll a two. Like, okay, I rolled a two. <laughs> So he takes 1.5 damage. You take one damage because you round down, I do believe. <laughs> yes. So did you guys, what did you guys roll? What am, what am I supposed to do? Dexterity saving throw. Yeah, 
So roll a d20 plus your dex. Regardless, good news is you're only oh. going to take three points of damage. Good. Do I get... You're only going to take three points of damage oh, if, if you fail. Three or one because I wasted it. So I can't do any of my No, I just dexterity saving throw. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? Uh, I just look at him and I'm like, I learned that from you. By that, I mean <laughs> stupidity. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you you heard us more than you heard him <laughs> just now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For his first action. Oh, God. He is very pissed right now. Um, yeah, pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> uh, I need Varrock and Turk to make... Uh, well, Varrock, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Turk, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Well, I moved back, so is that still... It's still... You still got to make it. 20. Okay, you said constitution saving mm-hmm. throw? Uh, 14? All right, you both are fine. Um, and he's going to come after you, Johnny, with a vicious bite. <laughs> uh, 17 plus 4. Yeah. All right. It's 2d6. Eight points of damage. All right. All right, and he is going to move... Um, uh, just about 20 feet away. If he moves, we can take a, an attack, right? Uh, you can't because you're not with him anymore, but you two could if you want to. Yeah, right. I'll, yep. I'll swing Do my it. cutlass at him. All right. Just we wanted to remind came. everybody of that. Huh? So. We both came? Yeah. I think it's normally one, but you both can do it. Well, all right, hold on. I rolled a 14 and it fell off the table, and then I rolled again and it was a four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've got eight, so... All right, good job, guys. That was a big pile of poopy. <laughs> that was a big pile of poopy. He gets away. Okay, yeah, awesome. uh, Turk. Uh, my turn? Yep, he's starting to breathe heavy, and he is just staring right at you, Turk, with this just evil glare. I also just want to point out, like, I've just been talking mad trash about <laughs> yes, him. Yes, you have. I think we all have. I mean, we're, like, we're pretty... But, like, he's attacked you guys first almost every single time. <laughs> That's well, true. I'm surprised he went for you after I suck at P. A sword on him, but That's, yeah, you did kind of. I thought I was gonna get it. Forgot. All right, Turk, what you got? Um, trying to think of something clever to do. Okay, so you said he's hurting. Yes, and he is staring menacingly at you. Okay, I think I'm just gonna do what I have been doing. That's been working pretty well. So I'm just gonna, gonna go for it. I'm gonna take out that eye. Okay. So that that big eye. <laughs> okay. So I got a 19. Yep, that hits. And then fancy arrow. I have uh, nine damage, and I look. Now I'm looking like right at him. He's looking at me. I'm looking right back <laughs> in the same demeanor. So. Here's how this plays out. As you are, he's staring at you menacingly, and you kind of give that same glare back. And I also have a map of the city I grew up in. I'm just going to hold that up and just like point at it so he knows who I am, hopefully. I don't think he'd know who you are. Well, maybe he would know who else lived in that town. Either way, he, as you release your arrow at the same time, he just charges at you. Mouth wide open, just coming for you. Um, but that arrow, it just goes straight directly into his central eye and with enough force that it actually comes out the back of him um, and explain how he goes down. I have I have a lot to say. <laughs> did, did he see the map before? <laughs> I'm assuming he saw, but I'm not sure he knew okay. what it meant. All those eyes and he can't see a map. <laughs> No, he saw it. I just don't think he understands what the heck you were showing him. I wanted him to know who else lived there and who uh, who gave him that scar and who was taking him out. Me finishing the work of my parents. And I just start crying again, but I just like stand there with my arms up and he can't take it. No. <laughs> And I also say this is for my parents 
This is for Xenia, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> and I throw my longbow down. <laughs> yeah, and you guys see this kind of go down as Turk is yelling this out, and Zodanorth, the Deep Lord, just kind of, as he's attacking her and the arrow goes through, and she yells all this out, um, uh, Varrock and Johnny um, roll a, um, uh, what would it be? Roll a history check for me. 14. One. Varrock <laughs> doesn't quite remember, but Johnny, you remember that a while back when Alfred was explaining where everyone was from, you remember the story of the, um, the two guardians of Turk's parents who were at sea um, fighting off some monster and remember him saying that he drew the sword across the eye of the beast that they were fighting and this is in fact the same beast so this is in fact the one that killed Turk's father and mother at sea and this this means a lot more as you recognize this as Turk I'm like shaking <laughs> shakes in <laughs> anger as she kills the beast that slew her father and mother at sea those years ago as she gets revenge on this for not only them but for your fellow guardian Xenia who died also at the hands of this beast now as this beast goes down you start to feel this rumble um, as all these stars and galaxies that were floating around you begin to almost fall to the ground and you start to feel this rush I this weight start to water, crush down on you as water begins and the gravity and everything kind of just fades away as the water rushes in and Johnny is I'm drinking. drinking that potion like it's I'm just like as she's doing her like shake and rage thing I'm like <laughs> what are you two doing as this is going down I He's come too as well all right so thing. you guys start drinking your breathe underwater potion as this water and just weight just starts to come down and crash down as you feel the weight of the basically the whole top of the ocean crushing down on you and now you are submerged with the feeling of wetness and water and that same portal that dropped you down you start to see it expand and you see it starting to slowly close up That's as this weight and everything is starting to just crumble around you and you see rocks starting to fall and that that portal is getting smaller and smaller what do you do swim to the swim. top very quickly just it. just keep swimming <laughs> all right uh roll a constitution check for me everybody Is this a saving throw? No, it is not. Straight constitution. 17. It's a will check, basically. 17? Uh, I don't know 12. what that is. Constitution is the main number on your sheet. Oh, so. there we go. 19. You have 17 for you mm -hmm. and Turk? 12. 12. All three of you are able to just swim oh, your oh, hardest yeah. as everything is crumbling down around you. You start to see those creatures from the outside being sucked down to where you guys are at as you guys are swimming straight up. And you reach the portal just in time as you feel yourselves being pulled back up. And you're still able to breathe through all of this because of the breathe underwater potions you all took. And um, just as fast as you fell the first time, as fast as you are taken up and as you all reach the surface, Johnny and Varrock, you are pretty far down the beach. And Turk, you are completely separate from them on this other side of the beach as you are washed up on shore through all this. And you see, you hear this loud explosions where the obelisk was as it cracks and disintegrates. Um, and you see all that stuff being sucked back in and then they're still in this and quiet. And, uh, Varrock and Johnny, you're kind of just coming to, and Turk, you are by yourself, basically on the on the beach, and your ring starts to pulsate. Uh. <laughs> it's starting to, you know, really turn blue, and then from this, it projects an image of Zinnia.
and she is there and she begins to talk to you and she says hello Turk crying <laughs> <laughs> she says there's so much I need to tell you when you when you all found me um, I went on the reason I left I had to go find my father she says that she just had to know that's why she left she apologizes and says that she's so sorry sorry that she left you all but she just had to find her father um, and she says that you know she went through all this to find the man and she says there's something I need to tell you Turk this, this the same beast that killed your father killed my father and there's something that he told me I saw him Turk we're sisters <laughs> She says that her father and your father were, was originally, when he was killed, he was able to, through magic, be able to impose his spirit inside this ring. For when he died, his bloodline would also be uh, basically connected to this ring. So as she, as Xenia died, her father's spirit was removed from the ring and replaced with Xenia. And he told her the tale of how he left to protect Xenia but he found another love and that's where you came from. And so you're half sisters. And she says, until you die, Turk, I will be infused in this ring. You are able to call on me for help at any time you need. And I will be here to give you any guidance. So I will always be with you until you die and you take the place of this ring. And it gets passed on to the bloodline. Which means you got to have a kid. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, meanwhile, we're on the other side of the island. <clears throat> we like sit up and there's just looking for rock. I'm like, man, uh, good thing we made those wishes, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would have sucked if we didn't make them up. We would not be here. We gotta, we should keep doing that every, every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you two are still kind of, you start making your way up shore and you guys, as you're making your way up shore, you notice, you see that. Uh, that Turk is in fact speaking to this almost holographic image and closing up the conversation she tells you all this and is there anything you'd like to say to her uh thank you and I wish wish I had more time with you <laughs> and she says in times of trouble and when you really need me just call on the ring and I'll be there to help that's awesome and then did she you, she goes back into the did ring did you just become a green lantern <laughs> thank you sis <laughs> um, and so yeah you all uh, begin to you converge again with each other um, is my of, boat still there you have no idea where your boat's at so we're not on you're, the same you're island. on the shore of the village now Oh, that's where it washed you up gotcha yep, you see the crowd of people rush when they see you they come and grab you and they're just just cheers and shouts as you, you know, basically save this village. Everyone seems to be normal. There's not this heaviness. You see in the distance, you see Duncan and Janet just holding hands oh. with like the sun setting behind them as a new dawn arises for Blue Squid Village and the madness seems to be gone. Boom. Party time. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you, you all walk back towards the village, um, kind of in this victorious triumph of uh, walk, you see that everything kind of starts to fade away. And this almost white, bright light of a door appears in front of you um, as everything else kind of fades away. And who would be on the other side with an outstretched arm saying, are you ready for your next adventure? Oh, gosh. <laughs> here's, a, here's a question for you, Alfred. <laughs> Do we just, like, phase out to these people? I was literally being carried on people's shoulders, and now I'm in this white... Like, how messed up are these people now because of you and the things you... You didn't even let us say goodbye. I didn't get a forwarding address for Duncan. I mean, <laughs> I want to be invited to that wedding. We were going to have all the drinks bought for us. All obviously. of them. Every single one. He could have found a husband. I know the life of a guardian. She's, it's going to suck from here on look, out. She's got, I'm just, I'm asking for their, we're supposed to protect people, right? Yes. Yeah, we want to protect them. You protected uh, these people. I mean, no, but hey, hey, got to protect the mental 
fortitude, strength, health, mental health. That's the word. You got to protect their mental health. And if we're just disappearing on people's shoulders, maybe they'll think the madness isn't left. He says, don't worry. There'll be plenty of time for you to go back and visit. He says, I know the life of a guardian sucks, but we got to pull you out to, there's, there's more people in need of help. And, uh, they involve suits. Um, Hey, if you didn't notice, I'm now wearing a bright yellow suit. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna mention you standing here naked is a little uncomfortable. <laughs> nope, <laughs> wearing the yellow suit now. He says, but are you, you guys do great. Are you getting promoted because of us? Do you get bonuses when we do well? Hey, yeah, you, I guess you can okay. say that. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I'm glad you're benefiting yeah. off of us. Yeah. I'm glad that trickle down uh, bonuses is really working out for everyone. <laughs> he says, well, we got a lot of catching up to do, so let's go as he leads you through this door and you are off to your next adventure. Yay. Thanks everybody. See you next adventure. <laughs>